Thank you, Justin, and a very warm welcome to uh, everyone here this evening. I'd like to declare the meeting open as a quorum has been reached. Greg Brown is an apology for the meeting tonight. The minutes of the 140th annual general meeting were on display in the foyer um, as members registered for tonight's meeting. So um, I'd like to uh, formally have those minutes approved. If I can have someone, thank you. And uh, could I have a seconder, please, for those minutes? Thanks very much. The um, chairman's address um, is something I know you're all eagerly awaiting for tonight. As I said before, a very warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for your attendance and participation in the Essendon Football Club's 2014 AGM. It's really great to see so many of our passionate members here. Tonight I will speak openly and candidly about 2014, a year that will be remembered as one of mixed outcomes and successes, both on and off the field. Xavier Campbell and his administration performed admirably throughout the year with record membership, sponsorship and a $721,000 trading profit providing highlights for the year. The ongoing ASADA investigation and our determination to fight for our players' rights occupied significant management and board focus and at the same time incurred material costs for the club. The ASADA process continues to place pressure on our players, our board and the club's administration and our members and stakeholders generally. Make no mistake, we, like everyone in this room, want this matter finalised as quickly as possible. But I'm sure that you all agree that we cannot and will not compromise the position of our players for the sake of a quick resolution, simply to satisfy the broader public. <laughs> From a financial perspective, net legal and other associated costs amounted to $1.1 million during the 2014 year, and that is a year-to-date number. Importantly, the club's directors and officers' insurance cover positively contributed to this result. The club has been actively working with the AFLPA, representing our past and present 2012 players, to bring this matter to a conclusion and to put to an end the stress and the disruption being endured by our club and its supporters. It is important to remind our members that during the 16 month period from February 2013 to June 2014, the investigation has been largely out of the club's control. And throughout this period, the club also had increasing concerns around the process generally and whether or not legal rights of our players and staff had been upheld. In June this year, ASADA issued show cause notices to our players without any evidence to support the claims and consequently backing our players into a corner and by so doing, potentially encouraging a compromise deal to be done. At this point, the club made the decision to challenge the legal validity of the process. This wasn't a decision made lightly, and it was a decision we felt at the time was necessary to ensure the process had been fully legal and appropriate. Although many elements uncovered through the federal court challenge were frustrating and at times disturbing, it was ultimately ruled that the process was legal. Further determination on this process will be delivered shortly through the appeal of James Heard, which is on foot at the present time. Today, the AFL Anti-Doping Tribunal began and it will sit again on Thursday and Friday before breaking for Christmas. It will resume on Monday the 12th of January and could run until late January. We hope 
This is the last step before our players' names can be cleared once and for all and we can all move forward putting this major distraction behind us. As a result of these events of the past two years, we have conducted a major review of governance and integrity policies and procedures across all facets of the club. Key areas covered in this area include a new protocol covering all medical treatments of players, a revised organisational structure including management responsibilities and staff reporting lines, minimum standard of governance impacting all areas from directors all the way down to volunteers, reporting and compliance across all key areas, risk management and planning and cultural standards including values and behavioural framework. In relation to football operations, we now believe our football department and coaching panel are well structured and contain appropriately credentialed and experienced staff, enhancing our pursuit for final success. During 2014 season, both Rob Kerr and Neil Craig continued to oversee the effective management of football performance and operations. Sharing duties between operations and compliance and on-field performance proved an effective strategy and structure throughout the year. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome new members of our coaching panel for 2015. Mark Harvey as an assistant coach, Mark Neal as development coach, and Matthew Lloyd filling the much needed role, well, not much needed necessarily, but much needed anyway, of goal kicking coach. Now moving on to Bomber Thompson. Mark stepped up into the caretaker coach role for, two, for 12 months and provided our playing group with continuity and development that they much needed. Mark's strong performance throughout the year was clearly demonstrated by leading our young side into a very creditable final, finals performance against North Melbourne. Whilst the board had a clear preference to retain Mark's service next year, we were unable to find suitable and meaningful role that would benefit both Mark and the club. We spent a great deal of time working with Mark on creating a new role, but he was unable to provide any certainty on what he wanted. Mark is a great Essendon person and will always be welcome at the club. We wish Bomber all the best of luck for his future direction. I would like to mention some key highlights throughout the year. Firstly, congratulations to Dyson Heppel, this year's Crichton Medal winner. In only his fourth year at the club, Dyson was a very worthy winner of this prestigious award and is an outstanding person and ambassador for the Essendon Football Club. In relation to recruiting and, play, and the playing list for 2015, congratulations to Adrian Dodoro and his team for drafting seven quality players to further complement our playing list for next season. Essentially, we have added four players with AFL experience, including a Brownlow medalist, two highly rated tall midfielders, the best rated international prospect, and the son of a former champion of the club. We will hear from these uh, recruits shortly. Other important matters to report on include taking a brief look at uh, the Windy Hill facility to start with. We continue to hold the lease over the Windy Hill precinct until the year 2031. While we continue to operate our Windy Hill venue and fitness centre, we have developed plans to enhance the, the facilities further to create a year-round sporting and community facility. In 2015, we plan to upgrade change rooms to accommodate home and away teams and improve facilities for the Essendon VFL home matches, the EDFL umpire training and EDFL matches. 
Eight VFL home matches are scheduled to be played at Windy Hill in 2015. Future improvements will include retractable fencing of the precinct, electronic scoreboards, improved lighting and long-term redevelopment of the Cookson stand. Essendon Football Club are close to finalising discussions with Mooney Valley City Council, the Essendon District Football League and third party tenancy for the use of the former EFC administration building. In 2015, we will be implementing a number of initiatives to ensure we continue to improve the member experience across all touch points with the club. We will provide better accessibility and affordability at Essendon Games with the removal of fully ticketed reserve seat matches and return to general administration admission. We have a fan friendly fixture with more games on Saturday and Sunday afternoons, providing more opportunities for families and country supporters to attend our games. We will enhance the match day experience and atmosphere at Essendon Games with better customer service, more entertainment and exciting new game day rituals to be revealed in the new year. I don't even know how, what they are, so I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure they'll be exciting. There are many highlights to look forward to in the 2015 fixture. Commencing with the 100 year anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli, the 2015 Anzac Day blockbuster against Collywood will have extra significance next season. For the first time, every Essendon membership without a reserve seat will have priority access to an exclusive member ticket pre-sale. The traditional dream time at the G game against Richmond continues to be the marquee match of Indigenous round and a great celebration of our Indigenous players. The work we do in remote Indigenous communities as well as Indigenous programs generally like the, the walk and talk and our, and our long walk charity. Which brings me to Fletcher's 400th game. What can I say about Fletch? that hasn't already been said. The evergreen Dustin Fletcher is now only seven games away from his magical 400 game milestone. Fletch will also become only the second player in the history to play league football at 40 years of age. An incredible story and much anticipated celebration for everyone involved in our club. In round 15, we will celebrate the 10th anniversary of the call to arms game against Melbourne at the MCG. It was against the Demons in 2005 when our club first wore the famous yellow armband to honour the courage of Adam Ramanaskis and his brave fight against cancer. The 84-85 30-year premiership reunion is one that uh, we're eagerly awaiting and looking forward to. For the first time in five years, we will be playing Hawthorne as a home game at the MCG on a Sunday afternoon in round two. We will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of our, of our back to back 84 85 premierships against the Hawks with a special function. We hope to see a huge crowd and, and, and a big win, of course, for our club and our team on that premier event. The 1965 St Kilda Premiership reunion will be celebrated in round 14 at Etihad Stadium, 50 years since that Premiership. In order to ensure that we continue to listen and connect with our members starting in 2015, the club will hold an annual member forum which we hope will provide an important opportunity for our members to discuss the future direction of the club. We will provide more details about this forum early in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. 
I encourage all members and supporters to visit the club and attend our open training session. Next year, we have plans for more fan events at the club and opportunities to see the players train. In addition, there will be a strong focus on improving our engagement with past players across all areas of the club. I would also like to thank our members for taking the time to complete the 2014 Annual Member Satisfaction Survey. As Chairman, I can assure you that your valuable feedback is very important and we are committed to listening to members so that we can build a stronger and more successful club for many years to come. And to that end, I'd like to address our opt-out member donation. As a result of independent research, the club budgeted to receive $3 million from members as part of the fight plan, flight plan and fight plan. <laughs> Following the initial two-year flight plan campaign, there was a significant gap in the funds being contributed. Therefore, we determined to implement an opt-out fundraising model. This was not a membership levy, it was an optional donation through membership renewals and was importantly communicated to all members. Over the last two years, the opt-out donations have played an important role in reducing our overall debt. However, the board has listened to your feedback and believes a change is necessary and has now improved a new approach to an opt-in campaign starting from 2016. Thank you, all members. Thank you for uh, your donations. We're extremely grateful. Your generosity is uh, outstanding. I'd now like to touch briefly on Kevin Sheedy. A regular question that I've been asked recently has been, will Kevin ever return to the Essendon Football Club? Well, I can't say that he will, and I can't say that he won't. <laughs> but what I can say is that I have met with Kevin on a couple of occasions and will be continuing to have discussions with him about what the future might look like for Essendon and Kevin Schutte. Sponsors. Sponsors are critical to any football club and the Essendon Football Club has a strong and loyal list of major sponsors. Kia, Fujitsu, True Value Solar and Adidas. Each is a major commercial sponsor of the club and it's members like these four that really create a wonderful financial foundation for us to focus the management of the club from. So I would like to thank all four of those major sponsors for your ongoing support throughout uh, not just the year of 2014 but the past number of years. Thank you. In conclusion, there are some special mentions that I would like to make. Xavier Campbell accepted the promotion from Chief Operating Officer to CEO midway through the 2014 year. Xavier has done an outstanding job and has clearly repaid the faith and confidence that the board showed in him in this key executive role. Thank you, Xavier. I would also like to extend this thanks to your executive team and broader staff at the club generally. Your resilience and that of your staff is, uh, is just amazing and it does not go unnoticed. My deputy on the board, Paul Brasher, was, um, d has delivered significant value to the board and, and the club and I would like to publicly thank Paul for his valued contribution. Thank you, Paul. And also I'd like to thank my board for their outstanding contribution both individually and collectively throughout the year. It's been a tough year and they've done a great job, so thank you, board. <laughs> Particular thanks tonight go to Joanna Elbert.
Joanne has been a director of the Essendon Football Club since 2008. Her Essendon Football Club board responsibilities included membership of the Audit Committee, Chair of the Nomination Committee and board representatives on the centenary uh, uh, commemoration of 2015 Anzac Day and uh, she's just done a fantastic job. Joanne served on the club's Innovation and Investment Committees and a long time member, she has been active in the club's affairs as a, as a founding member of the Essendon Women's Network. Joanne is also a member of the Dick Reynolds Club. You'll be much missed, Joanne, at the board. <laughs> Kevin Egan. Kevin was elected to the board in December 1995. Perhaps, Kevin, before some of these players were even born, I suspect. He was uh, a, a 1965 Premiership player and is a life member of the Essendon Football Club. Kevin played 65 games before transferring to play with Port Adelaide in the SANFL. He coached successfully in the Diamond Valley Football League before returning to the Essendon Football Club in 1976 as a full-time administrator, spending the next 16 years as football manager during an extremely successful period for the club. Thanks, Kev. We'll miss you too. Most of you in the room tonight would know Greg Brown. Greg Brown has been struggling with his health in the past uh, six to nine months, and um, obviously uh, we've been uh, keeping in close contact with Greg. Greg's health is uh, his first priority, and whilst he has been uh, given leave of absence from the board to try and regain his health, a decision has been taken for Greg to sit down with the club early next year to determine whether he will stay on the board um, or retire to improve his health. As I mentioned earlier this evening, the Essendon Football Club has two new directors and I thought it would be worthwhile giving you some further background on each of them. Katie Leo, um, I know Katie got around and uh, spoke to quite a number of people outside before we came in tonight. Katie is a communications executive with Telstra and her experience in digital media, entertainment and emerging technologies will add a fresh perspective to the board in these areas. Katie is also a third generation passionate Essendon member and we welcome her and her enthusiasm to the Essendon board. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Paul Cousins has a background in both IT and hospitality and started his own commercial web design agency in 2003. The business is a leader in social media innovation and commercial web design and Paul will bring these skills and, and those attributes together with his own passion for the football club to the, to the board. Like Katie, he comes from generations of Bomber supporters and we welcome Paul and his energy and commitment to our board. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Can we do that next? So I just wanted to make mention tonight of James Hurd. James um, uh, has, is an apology tonight and um, clearly uh, James desperately wanted to be here and we wanted him to be here. He's right at the final stage of his MBA course at NCAD in Singapore and um, so whilst James was unable to be here, he certainly had a message for our, um, our gathering tonight. So I'd like to play that to you now. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to The Hangar. Uh, behind me at the moment we have a, a tackling session going on, one of the many things we're completing at pre-season training uh, so far this year. First, I just want to say I'll give my apologies for not uh, attending tonight. Um, I have my last module at INSEAD, the business course that the club was, uh, was I'm very thankful for the club for putting me through. Um, unfortunately, that coincided. And we all thought it was a great idea just to finish off the course and get it completed this year. It's been an incredible course, um, a lot of learnings, a lot of things that I've brought back to the Essendon Football Club that hopefully uh, will make us a better club and some things that I'm sure 
will make us a better football club going forward. Um, tonight's obviously a big night for the football club. It's been a huge year, a huge two years, um, and it, it's affected all of us in different ways. Um, for every supporter, every member, um, for the board, the players, and to the coaches and staff, um, hopefully we'll move through this very quickly and become a better football club because of what's happened. But obviously there's a lot to learn. Um, we've learned a lot from the mistakes we've made and, uh, and very keen to move through it and become a better football club. Uh, Pre-season training has been outstanding so far this year. We've just completed uh, the first six weeks of our pre-season training and I couldn't be happier with where the squad's at. We've had a few little niggles and a few injuries but the majority of training has been excellent. Uh, most of the guys are completing their fitness tests at a higher level than ever before and I think we've got a squad that is very capable of going a long way in September come 2015. With what we've seen already in pre-season, the experience in the squad has meant that uh, the, the level of training and the way the guys have learnt and what they've been taught um, is much quicker than before. And then the younger guys have been able to add an extra spark in terms of their fitness and, uh, and the way they've come into training. So we're very pleased from a coaching point of view and can't wait for 2015 to, uh, to kick off. For everyone at the AGM, I hope you have a good night. Um, as, again, sorry for not being able to be there, but uh, hopefully Christmas is very safe for everyone. You have a wonderful Christmas and we'll see you in 2015. Thank you. So in closing, I would like to finish by acknowledging two of our most important stakeholders. Firstly, to our players. Our players who are the finest and bravest group of young men who could, you could possibly imagine. We have all watched in amazement as for the whole of the last two seasons, they have come out each week and fought and performed and given their all for the Essendon Football Club. Their resilience and patience and loyalty is outstanding. So to the playing group, thank you. And secondly, to our members the lifeblood of our football club. On behalf of the board and everyone at the club, thank you for your unwavering and loyal support. Thank you to the members. <laughs> the last two years have been a testing time for us all, but you have stood up by your club and you are to be congratulated. Like you, I love Eston Football Club. I'm proud to be the chairman of this great club and we look forward to making everyone in the Essendon family proud to be a bomber in 2015.